our exhibition, Up, Over, and Through, featuring the work of Bill Verhover, Joan Wadley Curran, Amanda Davinsky's, and Heather McMorty. So let's give them a warm welcome. And, uh, so actually we'll start with Bill over in the corner. He's going to talk about his work a little bit and then toss it to one of the other artists. So I'm going to talk about these pieces. My background is in architecture and design. And so I'm all, often looking at my pieces, my work as design problems that I've set for myself. Um, I'm very interested in geometry, so you see a lot of triangles and grids in my work, but I'm also interested, and so part of that is an exploration of order versus chaos. Uh, and I feel like in this moment we're in in history. There's a lot of chaos overlapping. So my older work, which you'll see near the door and behind the register, is much more ordered. <laughs> so I feel like um, maybe the force of the chaos is kind of overwhelming and I'm responding to that. So I recently did a body of work that I labeled dissonance, uh, which has to do with cognitive dissonance or too much information or I'm being overwhelmed, I don't know which end is up anymore, and so I'm uh, exploring a lot of those ideas. So I'm, I'm a printmaker, and my primary medium is silkscreen printing. Um, I tend, and it's abstract, I tend not to have an image of what the outcome is going to be. It's more that I'm drawn to patterns, and I create uh, rules for myself of um, overall sizes, formats, uh, trying to blend things that are very ordered and things that are more chaotic. So in, in this piece, you see the triangles, but they're overlapping. And then there's this very um, sort of loopy pattern on top. It's kind of, there's more order in this one, uh, less chaos. <laughs> this piece is more um, actually grabbing images from the internet or from Google Earth or different places and playing with them in Photoshop to create more um, kind of visual noise and then layering them in different ways. So there's textures, there's what looks like might be a road pattern or maybe it's just a craculor of China, you don't quite know what it is. But there's order and chaos happening in all of them. Uh, so I thought I would ask Heather, so, uh, because Heather's also a screen printer, I felt like her work um, is, has more resonance with mine, not that the others don't, but I tend to be much more, um, there's geometry and um, man-made order in my work uh, and less uh, natural material uh, in those artists. So, um, Heather, how do you how do you deal with or how do you think about these issues of nature versus man-made or um, structured order versus organic growth chaos? Yeah, um, that's a, a great question, and I think maybe um, maybe I'll start with this piece here. Um, this uh, all of these series are titled "Learning a New Land." Um, I uh, about a year and a half ago, moved from um, Philadelphia to Providence, Rhode Island. Um, and since most of my work is based on experiences in the natural world, um, it was really important for me to kind of learn this new environment that I was a part of. And so um, these are a collection of screen prints that are based on um, imagery that I collected um, while walking in different um, woods in Rhode Island. Um, and this piece in particular is um, layering both natural information and also um, the shadows from a bridge. Um, and so I think this is a, um, maybe a great place to start to answer your question, Bill, of how information from both man-made and natural get layered on top of one another. Um, and the perforated steel is creating this like um, kind of man-made, um, pattern that then conforms to the shape of a stone and gets completely um, kind of enveloped into the natural space. Um, and I think uh, another part of working with natural imagery and screen printing um, is that 
the colors that are available to me are so incredibly wonderful with screen printing. Um, <clears throat> and I really like to be able to bring some of those really vibrant colors and some colors that maybe appear in the natural world, um, but in very small and isolated moments, like um, a really brilliant orange lichen that um, when it's in its like environment, it maybe becomes more muted, but when you isolate it, it's like super bright. Um, so kind of pulling out those random spots of color um, and really thinking about layering. Um, the other piece that I have, which is on the back wall, um, also thinks about layering of <clears throat> information, but in a different way, where it's the screen prints are layered um, on top of one another, kind of like moving back into space. Um, this collage is a vertical layering, thinking about how things um, build up in nature and kind of the accretion of natural materials um, and mimicking that through paper. Um, yeah. So um, I thought that I would, um, I guess now I'll, I'll pass it off to <laughs> someone else. Um, I will admit this is my first time in the gallery. So I am still learning everyone's pieces and um, the titles for all of them. So, um, so that I don't mess anything up. <laughs> um, I would um, love to, thinking about layering and um, all of that, um, the layering of information, I'd love to move over to um, these pieces um, by Joan uh, Wadley Curran. Um, and Joan, I, I would love to hear about your um, uh, your process and um, how you go about layering information. Um, and it seems like there's a spatial layering and also layering of um, objects of different scales um, and bringing things from maybe disparate environments together. Okay, that's me. Uh, uh, I, I'm primarily a, a painter uh, who also works with drawing and, and also some printmaking. I got a couple grants from the Independence Foundation and that sort of started me doing um, some in, more intense printmaking. And I worked with Cindy Ettinger, who's a master printer in Philadelphia, and started doing etchings. And the reason that I started doing that was, number one, it's very, uh, associated with, for me, with drawing, and I really love drawing. But also, it was a, a way that I could start to experiment in a different way that I hoped would influence my painting in some way. So I started out doing regular etchings, and then uh, towards the end of the grant period, I started doing what's called sheen collé, which is adding, um, I would cut like an image out of one print and then adhere it to another print. So that was starting with that layering process of bringing together two disparate images. And in my work, I'm very interested in the interface of um, people and nature. And that involves either nurture, where people pay attention to, to nurturing things in their garden or whatever, or neglect, which you oftentimes see in the city, where you see a kind of opposition of the man-made and the natural. So in both of these images, there is, I think, a mix of those things. And sometimes it's uh, like in the uh, upper left side, there's sort of a wire form there that actually came from um, broken bed springs. Uh, or in the lower left-hand corner of this other print, there's this sort of uh, black, again, a kind of a black grid that actually was paper that my studio assistant here, Alana, who is really terrific, found for me. And then I started cutting it up and, and starting to use that as a kind of man-made pattern as well. So. After, uh, I don't think either of these have any etchings in them, but oftentimes I do combine both etchings and woodcuts. But I've started doing uh, woodcuts um, because I can print them at home, and it gives me the ability to make things more rapidly and to make a lot of um, different components that I use in making the prints. I just started doing these um, collages a, a little over a year ago, about a year and a half ago. And when I first started doing them, I wasn't sure I could do anything with them. I just thought, oh no, this is really going to show me that I can't do anything. But I had a lot of um, fun, and it was a challenge to try to uh, print different kinds of images in different ways. 
So I drew on the block, and Alana actually cuts the blocks for me. And then um, I print them in various inks, and then print them on various papers so that I can take one block and make it function in a lot of different ways, depending on how I, I print it. And then when I started um, making these images, I cut them out, and then I uh, got fascinated with not only the thing that I cut out, but the negative shape that was left uh, in addition to that. So that got me interested in starting to cut shapes that either mimic the shapes that were there or were different in some way. So in the upper right-hand corner, those sort of leaf shapes are just at random shapes that I cut out. So it gives me a richer vocabulary to work back and forth between the image and then um, just different kinds of shapes. So predominantly what I'm interested in when I'm starting to make these is to, uh, to play with shape and composition. And each time I make a new one, I try to set a problem for myself uh, that starts with just the manipulative. So I cut millions of different things out and my studio is covered with all these shapes. And I start bringing them together and seeing if there's any kind of charge when I bring them together. Because when I start, I really don't know what I'm gonna do. Uh, I might have a couple of shapes that I'm interested in, but then I just bring together a lot of disparate <coughs> elements and shuffle them around until something clicks. And then that sort of takes me uh, in a certain direction. So what I think about is compositionally, I think, for example, like if I use a void in the middle, or is the edge activated, or is the center activated, or what kind of color um, information I might have, so changing the color from one thing to another. So all those things sort of get me going, thinking about sort of formal compositional things and color and shape. So for me, although they're very different from my paintings, there's a real similarity because one of the things that I'm interested in, even though I'm a, a representational painter, is uh, the sort of formal means of playing with uh, composition and color and kind of abstract uh, use of representational elements to create different kinds of um, patterns and different kinds of uh, uh, shapes and uh, color situations. So I think that's about it for me. Um, Joan introduced herself as a painter primarily, and you know what, if you ask me who I am, I would also describe myself as a figurative painter working in oils. However, I haven't done that in the past 10 years. <laughs> um, but the reason I bring that up is, um, I mean, I'm, I'm working on washes and these large-scale um, charcoal drawings, but the reason I bring up the figurative aspect was the, the paintings that I was making was about the interaction about two people. So it was clearly about you know, having those figures there and having some sort of psychological interaction. Something was happening in that space between them. And it was relatively flat. It was not a deep space. It was on like a very shallow little stage. And then um, I started working on these large drawings. This was the first one of them. And I had taken a trip uh, along with the other faculty members of um, the Drexel Visual Arts uh, Department to China and um, came back very influenced by what I saw there. And I decided, you know what, I, I, I don't have the time to um, devote to a painting because things will dry up you know, before I can get back to them, but I can draw. So I put up three of these large uh, papers uh, next to one another. And this one started clearly with this um, uh, peony. Uh, I guess it's sort of a cross between a peony and a lotus blossom. <laughs> but what the, these drawings are about, is, I mean, obviously it was about that object. But then I realized, you know, I don't want to have just one thing just kind of floating there. What is this about for me? It's about this movement. Mm. It's about the arc that my arm makes, and it kind of keeps twirling around. And the more I was working on it, you know, I'd work up an area, and as I was refining it, I would put my hand, I would lay my hand against the drawing, and of course, I'd eradicate exactly what I had just <laughs> done. Yeah, I was like, oh my gosh, what am I doing here? Well, then I realized, well, this is kind of a push and pull, because I kind of like that. It becomes more atmospheric. Mm -hmm. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm willing to let go of this space that I was so concerned with before, and all of a sudden, something, kind of the air becomes thicker, something suggests itself, there's kind of an overlap, it becomes a little denser, a little deeper that way. So 
this was a real treat to do. So I would get to a point where I couldn't figure out what to do with it, or you know, I, I knew I was going to do something too much to it. I walked to the next drawing, keep drawing on that. Uh, you know, with a certain repetitive movement would start hurting my wrist. I'd go to the next one, I'd start erasing. So this one, um, I thought, you know, I'm going to go with something kind of dark in the, in the, in the, in the middle here, and let it be about this miasma, more about the air. It started with the, the elements that I used in this particular piece came um, from a, uh, a repetition of this form in here. And this was a um, uh, reproduction of an original um, wallpaper found in Philadelphia. And it's called Adelphia. Yeah. <laughs> so I took this and I thought, well, if it, you know, it can go through different permutations and it will change. You know, so you know, the center fleur de lis becomes this kind of more of a floral thing. I grew up in a family um, uh, of immigrants, and you know, they weren't able to bring their things along with them when they came to this country. But what they could do was they started a garden, and it was a very lush garden. So the interior of the house was full of very exotic, rare plants. The exterior was a hanging garden of Babylon uh, outside. And so this seemed familiar to me. So I had, I, I had both a flat space and I had a deeper space. I had something that looked kind of natural. I had something that looked very graphic. Um, I moved down to this one here. This one's just a little bit smaller in size. And in this, I thought, OK, well, what I'm going to do here is I'm interested in this idea of, of these flat elements. Um, uh, against these very kind of a rococo leaf elements that are, are very linear. And um, I can't tell you how many times, you know, this little area has been reworked. And, you know, because it takes me about a month to finish one of these, and sometimes longer. So I've got three of them going at a time. So, you know, in three months' time, I'll, I should have three drawings if nothing goes wrong. Um, I have an idea of what they're going to look like. But rarely do they turn out that way. You know, it's, uh, you know, this one's a lot darker than I thought. Uh, I didn't expect it to be yellow to be a part of it. Um, I also want to mention the fact that um, clearly lines important to me, and it's it's something I think that was really kind of inculcated. To, you know, that's the way a kid draws, right? Linearly, and then you color it in. Um, but when I went to school, uh, there was um, calligraphy was still required, and this repetitive movement, and, and you, you know, you, you can draw the perfect A over and over and over again, and you get to understand what's the perfect shape within the line, what's the, the shape of the, of the line itself, how thick does it need to be, you know, can it vary? So there's inside, outside, and the actual line, too. So the, to me, that's the intrigue of this. And when I was doing figures, too, I always had a little story. There was some sort of you know, psychological thing going on, and I'm telling a little story whether anybody knows it or not. I'm doing the same thing here. You know, I talk about, or to myself, you know, whether I'm thinking about something that's happened to me or, or you know, this interaction, and oh my gosh, they're having a bad time. No, they're going away. No, they're coming back. Uh -huh. um, but it, it just kind of anthropomorphize what's going on, and it just kind of, you know, a little storytelling time. It's the best thing in the world. Drawing. So, thank you all for coming too. And I'm sure if you have any questions for any of us, I, actually, I would like to be the first to ask a question. And I would like to ask it of Heather. And you had mentioned that um, you have a lot of colors available to you. Do you have a color palette that you start each image with, or does it evolve? You know. Yeah, I normally do. So when I when I go for walks, um, I take a Pantone color um, set of Pantone color swatches with me, <laughs> and um, that's how I set up my first like um, color palette. So I will kind of select a couple colors as I'm walking, um, and those will be what I take back to the studio and start my print with. Um, so and each print then um, refers to a particular space, but also particular time, um, how the light was at that point of, um, at that day, and, and all of that. So, yeah, yeah, um, and it's it's always so fun to you find, like, you've got a pack of cards. Right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Who that pack? Yeah. Um, is that like the box? Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've seen some portable ones where it's just like,
like a fan of, oh, of yeah. car, things about this tall, like and they're pinned they're together, strong. and there may be like 50 cards in there, yeah. but it's not that heavy, and mm -hmm. I don't know if that's what yeah. you have, but I've seen smaller, portable. Uh -huh. Yeah, this one's a little bit smaller. It's still like his individual like mm -hmm. sheets, um, oh. and yeah. uh, you know, I, I take a lot of things with me. <laughs> 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 that's what backpacks are for. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> Do you find, like, on your walks during different times of the year that it's kind of the same sort of, I don't know what you would call it, like, mm -hmm. yeah. series of colors? I'm not an artist, so. Yes. Um, yeah, it's interesting. I'm doing a, um, a series of prints right now that are about um, the grasses and salt marshes, and I started mm -hmm. it in July. And my color palette over the summer was like this really vibrant green, and it has slowly progressed into purple like through green wow. into yellow and now it's in like a purple. And I'm like, oh, okay, it has changed seasonally. I'm working with the same subject matter, but the color has yeah. definitely changed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So now I have a question for Joe. Has uh, um, working on these altered your paintings? I don't know, a couple people have asked me that. I'm not sure, I, I think it probably has. Um, but uh, I'm not sure exactly how. I think uh, color-wise, it's I think made me more even more sensitive to color than I was in the in the past, perhaps. And then I think also um, uh, a play between flatness and volume, uh, because uh, these prints have both of that. They tend to be more flat than the paintings, yeah. but pa playing with you know, what's in front of, what's behind, what's flat, what's volumetric, and just thinking more about the kind of space that I'm building. And I think about that a lot in the painting too, but it sort of, I guess, gets me to pay attention to it in a different way, perhaps. Yeah, the space is so different. Yeah. Anybody else? Well, I don't have a question so much as a comment of seeing all of our work at our, you know, Kudos to Tina and Mike for putting us all together. Because <laughs> while we're, we're all works on paper, but um, our imagery is very different. But what I see as a common thread is, is this kind of use of collage, even if it's not actually gluing paper on paper. Mm -hmm. I think the 20th century use of collage and development as a technique has kind of opened up the way you compose and construct an image. And I think we're all kind of thinking this collage thing in our heads of what goes on what? And this, as Joan described, is kind of put something together and say, is it working? Is it not? What does it mean? Um, that's definitely the way I work, and I think that's probably the way all of us are working. Um, even, you know, your lovely drawings, there, there's a lot of layers going on. My first reaction was, these are like prints, because they've got so much activity going on, uh, more obvious in the ones where there's layers of color, but even in the whole, um, gray and white ones. Um, and a part of it is that exploration of the spatial layers, but also I think it's just this more open attitude of I'm not drawing a thing that I see in front of me, I'm composing images that are swirling around in my head. Um, I think that's some a common thread we all have. Actually, this one has an extra layer of um, um, uh, similarity to all of your prints here. It's because um, the ginkgo leaf pattern mm -hmm. is something that was, um, I believe I saw the first print in uh, China that was a mm -hmm. kind of mm -hmm. overall pattern of ginkgo leaves. Mm -hmm. and I thought, oh, here we go. John has a lot of love. <laughs>